Battlefield 1. Is it worth a buy? Let's read the words, the words, the words, the words! Battlefield 1 takes you back to the Great War, World War 1, where new technology and worldwide conflict changed the face of warfare forever. Take part in every battle, control every massive vehicle, and execute every manoeuvre that turns an entire fight around. The whole world is at war. See what's beyond the trenches. Well, America weren't technically until it was pretty much over, so let's just, you know... And speaking of America, I love Americans, and I love their steaks. Never had one, but I've seen them on TV. Mac, how can... This is... Sorry. Stop ringing the bell. What I was going to say was... It's a joy to have a game, a war game, a big AAA war game that has no people running around going, Hoorah! <laughs> like a bunch of fucking seals on steroids. Honestly, it's such a joy that this game isn't about fucking American Marines. You know, there are Americans in this and I've got nothing against Americans. Americans are actually my biggest demograph. It's like, I'm more popular in America than my own freaking country. And Germany's fourth. Mac, get on with the game. So, Battlefield 1. As you know, guys, I have not been a fan of Battlefield ever since. The last good Battlefield game was Bad Company 2, let's be honest. All the rest have been utter banter wank. They really have. The best one ever was Battlefield 1942. And all of the ones since then have just been shit. They've just, it's just, honestly. I haven't been able to tell the difference between Call of F***ing Duty and Battlefield for the last 10 years. Because they've just been trying to outdo each other by copying each other. And uh, and I previewed this game and I wasn't impressed. Um, but I still went ahead and bought it. Obviously they wouldn't give me a, a, a copy to review because, you know, I've got a bell. But here we go. This is my review of Battlefield 1. Let's start with the options. There's a shit ton of them, guys. Absolute shit ton of them. I'm running this on a GTX 770. Um, I've missed out using my new PC by like about two days, but it doesn't matter. So I'm on a GTX 770 and an i7, and it ran really well. It ran brilliantly. Um, I had to turn shit down, but it still looked bloody great. It still looks nice. This game is gorgeous, guys. It just looks so nice. The keybinds are as keybinds should be. It's like you can bind every key to f you if you want. You know, it's great. I'm sick of games where you can't bind the same key more than once. You know, it's this is just as games should be. So I've got nothing, no problem at all with that. The sound is awesome as well. Absolutely love the sound. There's a couple of dodgy voiceovers in multiplayer. Um, the silly narration bitch. She's, she's shit. It's probably a transvestite lesbian that's ginger and black. Just to tick all the boxes. Right, just get on with it. Single player has never been Battlefield strength. It's always kind of been, you know, single player, who cares? No one cares. No one cares. And it's always been shit. Uh, Call of Duties is all about the single player with its scripted bullwank and all that. Battlefield's always been about multiplayer. But this one has a campaign. And when I loaded it up, I thought, well, I've got to play it because I can't review it if I don't play it. So, all right, let's go. Let's see what it is. It'll be wank. You know, guys. I've got to say, I've got to say that it is f***ing amazing. It's, it's, it's shit, obviously, in certain areas. For example, the biggest gripe that really nearly had me throwing the stunt bell across the room was the maps can be so small, and if you stray slightly out, it says you are off the battlefield. You will be castrated and executed in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. And you've got to crawl your ass back onto the into the map. If you're in a tank that turns like a fucking asthmatic hippo with no legs, you've got no chance of getting back. And I died because I couldn't get my tank back on the fucking map. It's stupid. It's like, yeah, if you're going to do that, have a mountain wall there or something like that. But it has all this area that you look at and you think, oh yeah, I want to just go around there. And then you just go around there and it says, I'm sorry, you're off the battlefield. What a pile of shit. It's fucking awful. Other than that though, guys, the campaign is brilliant. It's like set a, a, it's a story. It's a series of stories about five people. It doesn't last long. That's the trouble. I think it's between six and eight, ten hours. I haven't finished it all yet, but I was playing it for a few hours last night and I was so engrossed in it. It was just amazing. Um, it's it's the voice acting is brilliant. The the whole characters you, you play like a 
I'm not going to spoil it for you, but one of the characters he plays a, a, a English tank driver, and he's in this tank with a Scottishman and an Irishman. Well, what? That's a recipe: an Englishman, an Irishman, and a fucking Scotsman in a tank. You know, it sounds like it sounds like the beginning of a joke. And the banter between them is just brilliant. And you get that sense of World War One when you're playing it. It's like the graphics are great that scenario is amazing there's mud everywhere there's germans running around there's buildings getting destroyed there's airstrikes artilleries even got speckled jim the little pigeon running around or flying around it's it's just brilliantly told it's it's when you die it's like it comes up with the name of the guy when he was born and when he died and then it moves on to the next one it's just i've never seen anything done as well as the campaign for this it is great i'm loving the campaign i just wish it was like three times as long but the way they've done it it makes call of duty which is shit anyway but it just pisses all over call of duty's campaign it really really does so if you've bought this game and you've just says oh forget the campaign that's straight to multiplayer go and play the campaign it's really really good the ai is a bit wank but it's it's kind of like a big World War One nostalgia trip for me. I'm massively into World War One. I, I, I studied it for a long time. I've got loads and loads of um, videos on it. And that whole conflict fascinated me as to what used to go through people's heads when that whistle blew and they jumped out of the trench and ran to certain death and they knew they were going to die. But they still did it. And, and the lunacy of, of like Kitchener and sending wave after wave after wave of men against machine guns knowing that they're all going to die but he still just f***ing did it because he's an utter bell end but that was the mentality we did a cavalry charge in world war one do you know that i mean a f***ing cavalry charge guys and there's cavalry in this game um, and it's quite funny as well in this game anyway let's get on to multiplayer multiplayer has the usual band of wank you have your you capture and hold, you capture the flag, your team death, you know the way it is. And as soon as I saw it, I just thought, ugh. Because multiplayer in Call of Duty has been shit for, what, 10 years? Multiplayer in Battlefield has been shit for 10 years. There's nothing ever, ever matches 1942 and Bad Company 2. It's just, they were the best. It was the, what made them games so good in multiplayer was the size of the map and the, and the positioning of the troops and pretty much the balance of everything as well. It, it wasn't just kids running around with sniper rifles. Everyone's a sniper. People are dead. Where did that come from? Over, over there, over there, over there, and over there. But that's the way it's been for the last decade. But I've got to say that it's a bit better in Battlefield 1. Um, there's a mode in Battlefield 1 called and what that is it's a huge it could last up to an hour battle between defenders and attackers and whoever's attacking has five kind of attempts to knock them back and win the game if you get to the last two attempts you get reinforced with zeppelins or trains depending on the, the um like a gun train depending on the, the map that you're on it's great fun the maps are fucking huge and that's what I like. It's not just... I mean, the spawns are still a bit shit. And yes, it is kind of like five little maps strung together. But it's strung together with a bit of a purpose. And you can get a bit immersed in it. Especially when there's 64 players as well. The problem with Battlefield games now compared to Battlefield games back, you know, 20 years ago. Well, not 20 years ago, but about 16 years ago. Is that death strikes from all angles pretty much all the time on the big open maps. If you're not being shot at by a biplane, you're being sniped, grenaded, artilleried, gassed, machine gunned. <laughs> it's a killing machine, this game. It's a bit like um, uh, Star Wars Battlefront. Remember when I did that? Lots of people running around aimlessly dying. That's my first impression playing this game. It was pretty much that. I didn't matter where I went, what I hid behind, somebody had a bead on me, whether it was from the air, for a sniper, and it was so annoying and I hated it really and that was the first hour but when I started to play this new mode and uh, took me time a bit more it did become very very fun what makes it fun is if you can get past the open areas of the map where you will die lots and get to some of the choke points there was one where there's a it's like an underground bunker where the Germans are coming in from one side and the British are coming in from the other and you have really intense fights inside this room and and the rooms adjacent to it 
it does require strategy, a flamethrower if you've got it, grenades, and them little pauses in the game are really good. But where this game excels is the actual destruction. I've never seen destruction like this in a game. You can start a game off in this town. By the end of the game, there is no town. There is no town. It's gone. You know, buildings just blown up. You think, you see, if you're in a building, you go, ah, I've got a really good position here. Then a tank just says, huh. Oh, no more building bam boom you've just got no building left it blows the whole floor off a building or the whole side of a building it's insane guys the destruction in this game is just overwhelming that what lets it down for me is the stupid spawn system i don't get it i really don't fucking get it why the people who make these kind of games like dice are obsessed with spawning the player back into the action i mean what the actual f you, you spawn and you can see guys that killed you like five seconds earlier and you can just shoot them straight away or you can have a tank just mowing down people on the spawn it has the same problem as battlefront had it's it's you know it's bullshit what they should do is rethink the spawn areas they really should because it it does spoil the game in, it's in, on certain maps so what's the combat like well it's fluid, it's good, the weapons is good. They've kind of redone the classes in Battlefield games. For example, the uh, medic, he's responsible for not only healing people and reviving people, but he has to repair the tank. He's kind of like the engineer. He's also got a medium range gun now. So he's quite handy. Um, I quite like the, the way the classes are, but he doesn't have anything to attack vehicles with, unlike um, the other classes who have either an uh, like anti-tank grenade or a, um, a, a rocket launcher of sorts. The actual combat is fun, it's quite fluid, it's all in down sight stuff, you know, um, but it, you can fire from the hip, uh, you have to when you're wearing a gas mask, you can't obviously aim down sight with a gas mask in your face, um, so there is a bit of strategy here because you don't get the accuracy, obviously, if you're firing from the hip, so a good, a good strategy is to throw some gas before you assault and then you pretty much know that everybody you're assaulting is firing from the hip and you can use that to your advantage it is a good team game and it is really good fun i'm having fun and i you know i'm having fun with the game and, and that's what games is for and it's not as bad it's probably the best battlefield game since battlefield 2 in 1942 and rule to in fact it is it, it's better than all of the others, Battlefield 3 and 4, and obviously Hardline. Uh, it's better, better than all of them. I'm enjoying myself a lot more. I think it's more to do with the fact that it's set in World War I um, that's that's making it so good. It also has Deathmatch where, you know, you just run around shooting everybody. And even me at my age, I came more or less top, had the best kill death ratio. I can still hold my own guys, even an old fart like me. They're probably only using controllers to be honest but that was quite fun for 10 minutes you know just I don't know, i've only ever played one game and i you know i just kind of got bored uh running around shooting everybody it was like yeah yeah okay uh and then i went straight back to the big big huge operation mode which ah, is so much fun it's so much fun especially in the tanks blowing the shit out of everything i don't like the planes if i'm gonna be picky i'll say i don't like the the fact that it has these special units like flamers and these iron man basically iron man's in it you get this iron armor and a big fucking gun and it's bullshit why why didn't they just do what um, Return to Castle Wolfenstein did back in the 90s and just give you a flamethrower? Just have a flamethrower unit and just limit them to maybe two per team? Because the flamethrowers are really good, but why do they have to be up? Why do we need these overpowered... It seems like games today have to throw in the overpowered stuff to keep the f***ing kids happy. Let's have a big gun in the game, but, you know, let's not have iron-plated armour on it. As soon as you bring that into these games, you lose immersion straight away because you think, yeah, f*** off. Just fuck off, you know, just fuck off. This didn't happen in World War One. Why? Why are we doing this? It's like the developers think they need to throw all this stuff in over X-ray vision. Get it in. We, we gotta have it. You don't need X-ray fucking vision in games. You don't need super overpowered soldiers in games. Just let us all be the same. You don't need XP. You don't need perks. Let us all be the fucking same, please. 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 You know? See guys, I'm all against this leveling up in games like this. It's not war, it's it's not an MMO like Warcraft, which is fair enough because that whole game is just based on a giant time sink. This is a multiplayer FPS shooter. 
Why are we leveling up and unlocking weapons? Why is each class leveling up on a different XP tree? And if you get to rank 10, which takes ages, you get an overpowered gun. The assault class get this machine gun at rank 10 that only takes five bullets to put you down, but it has such a fast rate of fire and a huge ammo drum on it. It is just so much better than any other submachine gun in the game. And at rank 10, it's all yours. You can just go into the buildings and just mop up in there. No one toe to toe can stand against that machine gun. It's just, it pops you down in like a second. It's ridiculous. And you can get that gun by just sitting playing the assault class over and over and over again. And all the other classes, they have an overpowered gun as well. I don't get it. I actually don't get it. Why do we need this? Why spoil the game? You know, you run into a building with your ordinary gun and you come across someone like that and he puts you straight down. He's not a better player than you. He's just got a better weapon. All the weapons should be there from the start and you choose which one you want. And there shouldn't be any that are totally overpowered. If you've got a faster rate of fire, the bullets should do less damage. It should be tailored to what you want and what you, how your play style is. But no gun should be massively overpowered. Yes, you're going to have guns that are big, much more overpowered in close range, like a shotgun. But you take a shotgun outside and it's fucking shit. You know, unless... The, the player's standing right next to you, you know? But that's the balance, you see? There is no balance to a gun that can fire right across the battlefield very, very fast and accurately. So there you go, guys. Battlefield 1 is the best Battlefield game that we've, that's that been out in the last 10 years. It pisses all over Call of Duty. Um, it does have problems with, you know, the spawning system and the stupid levelling up to get better weapons. But that aside, it is a really fun game to play with a really good battle mode that is just like fighting in a war. It has some really well designed maps. There's only a couple that are dodgy. Uh, most of the maps are really good fun to play. I'm having a ball with it. It's really good fun and I'm going to give it a thumb up. What a surprise that is. But it's about time we had a decent war game to play.